nine five work together. We have four steps here. Our first step, um, October cash payment transactions for Golden Fabrics have been journalized. Determine the totals of the cash payments journal and enter zero if the column total is zero. So normally we would single line rule um, if we were paper pencil, but here we're going to put in our date. We're gonna use the last date of the month, the 31st. We're gonna label it as totals, and then we're simply going to add up our columns. So go ahead and get your calculator out. First, we're going to add up our general debit column. Yeah, I got 1,917 and two cents. My general credit is easy. There's nothing. I am going to put a zero in there. Make sure that you put that zero, otherwise it will be wrong. Then I'm going to add up my accounts payable debit, 2066 my purchases discount credit, 3280 and then add up my cash credit. Three thousand nine hundred fifty point two two. Now, before I go on, I do want to double check to make sure that my debits equal my credits. So I'm going to add my general debit plus my accounts payable debit. Then I'm going to add my credit columns together. I have a purchases discount credit plus my cash credit. Okay, those both should equal $3,983.02. So that tells me I should be right. I'm going to say grade step one. Next step. Step two, I need to post each line from the cash payments journal to the accounts payable ledger and to the general ledger. The cash payments journal is abbreviated as CP. So I'm going to start up here at my first line. Um, I'm looking here and I have a debit, general debit to utilities expense. So I'm going to go to my utilities expense account. The date is the third, or nope, sorry, the second. Um, cash payments journal page 10, so CP10. I have a debit of 124. And then I need to find my new balance. So debit and a debit, I'm going to add together. My new debit balance then is 1,072 and 59 cents. Account number 6170 will go back up to my journal. Um, next one, I'm going to Gray Manufacturing Incorporated. So this is going to be my accounts payable ledger. That is a vendor name. And notice I don't have anything in my general or debit column. That's because Gray Manufacturing goes with my accounts payable. So it's going to be this number here that I will use. So the date is the third. Cash payments journal page 10, so CP10. And when I look at my label, accounts payable debit, so I'm debiting this account for 1640 I'm going to find my new balance. Credit and a debit means I'm going to subtract, so I simply have a zero balance. Oops. And then that vendor number 220 will go up to my post reference. Next account is my purchases account. It's October 9th. CP10. And here I look and I see that I have a debit of 1575. I have a debit and a debit, so I will add my new balance is 95,703.25. And account number 5110 goes back to my post reference. 
Next account goes to my supplies office. It is the 12th. CP10. I have a debit of 64. I have a debit and a debit, so I will add. And my new balance is 3,248.17. Account number 1145 will go back up. Westland Supply is going to be my next one. That again is a vendor. My date here is the 16th, still on CP10. Again, I need to look over here at my accounts payable debit column. So I have a debit of 426. I have a credit and a debit. That means I will subtract to find my new balance. My credit number is larger, so I still have a credit balance of 566. Vendor number 240 goes back to my post reference. Supplies office is next. The date is the 31st, CP10. And I'm debiting that account for 48.15. I have a debit and a debit, so I will add. My new balance is 3,296 and 32 cents. And then account number 1145 goes back up. Next I have supply store. The 31st, CP10. I have a debit of 57.18. Debit and a debit, I'm going to add. My new balance is $4,237.36. And account number 1150 goes back up. Next, I'm going to miscellaneous expense. The date is the 31st, CP10. I have a debit of 47.64. Debit and a debit, I will add. My new balance is 2,537 and 61 cents. And account number 6135 will go back up. Last account that individually is going to be my cash short and over. The 31st, CP10, and I am debiting for $1.05. I have a debit and a debit, so I will add, and that brings me to $21 debit. And then $61.10 goes back. Okay, once I see that my post reference is completely filled in, that tells me I'm done posting individually. So I'm going to grade step two. Next step. Step three says I need to post the totals from the cash payments journal to the general ledger. So here I'm going to be looking at my totals down here. Now remember, I do not post my general debit total, so I'm simply going to put a check mark. I don't have an account to post that to. Same thing with my general credit total. All of these numbers were posted individually to these accounts, so that's why I'm not posting that. Next, I'm moving to my accounts payable debit. So I'm going to go to my accounts payable. The date is the 31st. I'm still on Cash Payments Journal, page 10, so CP10. Remember, look at your heading for that clue. It's a debit. It labels it as a debit. So I'm debiting that account for 
2066. I have a debit and a credit, so that means I'm going to subtract My credit number is larger, so I'm going to have a credit balance of 8,717.53. And then account number 2110 will go underneath that total showing that I have posted it. I'm going to do the same thing with my purchases discount credit. So purchases discount. Date is the 31st. CP10. Um, this is labeled as a credit, so I'm crediting that account for $32.80. I have a credit and credit, so I will add. My new balance then is $654.28. Account number 5120 goes underneath the total. Last total that I'm posting to is my cash account. The date is the 31st, CP10. This is labeled as a cash credit, so I'm crediting that account, 3,950.22. A debit and a credit means I will subtract. My debit number is larger, so I will have a debit balance of 12,504.97. And account number 1110 goes underneath. So once I have numbers or check marks underneath my totals, that tells me I'm done posting there as well. Grade step three. You can now move on to the part two of the video.